welcome to the Actual Tech Media EcoCast. My name is Jess and I am excited to be here with you all today. But before we jump into our content, I have some basic information that I wanna cover with you. All right, let's kick off our day here today by taking a quick tour of your audience console. And we're going to start with the questions window. So if you haven't already said hi, there is a whole audience of cool humans out there. So reach out and give a wave to the other members of the actual tech media community. Now, keep in mind that if you do have any technical issues today, a browser refresh is going to fix just about anything. But if those tech gremlins are clinging on today, no problem. Just throw a comment in the question section and our crew will be there to help. We also want this to be an informative webinar for you. So throughout today's EcoCast, we hope you'll get engaged and ask all your burning questions. Not only will we have team members responding to you over a live chat, we will also have a dedicated Q&A session at the end of our presentations. Now, if we don't get to your question during the live webinar today, don't worry because the awesome experts that we have here with us will be following up after we wrap. All right, next up, there's going to be lots of cool aha moments on the EcoCast today. And if you want to share those with your community, we've made it nice and easy for you. You can use the Twitter button right there on your audience console and the hashtag for today's EcoCast will be automatically added to your post. All right, our last stop on this guided tour, be sure to check out the handouts tab for some awesome resources and takeaways from our speakers here today. We have an info pack collection, solution briefs, white papers, data sheets, free trials, eBooks, upcoming webinars, and more. So many great resources, so be sure to go explore. Now, if that wasn't enough fun, we also have some exciting prizes that we'll be giving away throughout today's EcoCast. I'm gonna tell you a bit more about those later on, but a few quick reminders for you all. First, you do need to be here live in attendance at the EcoCast in order to qualify to win a prize, and we will follow up with all of you after we wrap. Now, all winners must submit an IRS Form W-9 to Actual Tech Media, and all winners must meet the Actual Tech Media prize terms and conditions. Now, if you don't know what those full T's and C's are, that's fine. We've got the full thing for you. Just head on over to that handouts tab, click in, scroll down to the bottom, and you'll find them waiting for you there. Now, the absolute most important thing to remember is that we love getting all your insightful questions during these live webinars. In fact, we love it so much that we actually have a special additional prize for all you inquisitive folks out there. So in today's EcoCast, we will be giving away a prize for the best question asked in each of our live sessions. Now, the expert speakers and teams will review all questions asked after we wrap the webinar, which means that even if your question does not get read out in a live session, there is still a chance to win. If you are a lucky winner here today and you would like to donate the value of your prize, we have several wonderful organizations that we partner with. So let us know when we follow up about your big win and we'll get that rolling for you. Again, we are so happy to have you all here with us live at the EcoCast today and we want to keep that good feeling going so let's connect on social media. Reach out and connect with Actual Tech Media on Twitter and on LinkedIn. We have lots of great content and we always want to hear from you. Now, if you're looking for more awesome content and resources right after we wrap the EcoCast today, be sure to subscribe to the Actual Tech Media channel on YouTube. Another fun way to win a prize and, hey, grow this awesome community is to refer an industry friend or a coworker to the Actual Tech Media webinar series. Now, you'll find a link to do that right in your handouts tab, and you will also be automatically redirected at the end of the webinar. And both you and your coworker or friend could win a prize, and we hold those drawings every month. So be sure to refer a friend because, it, hey, it could quite literally be a win-win situation. Next, we have a cool opportunity for all the decision makers out there to get connected with new and emerging tech and innovative vendors. Here's how it works. All you need to do is click on the link in your handouts tab, fill out a quick application, and the actual tech crew will then match you with some vendors that we think you should probably be chatting with based on your needs. There will also be fun opportunities that you get to choose to join in, like surveys, test runs, uh, new solutions, extended demos, and so on. You'll get some chances to win extra prizes, you'll chat with great people, and you'll learn about the hottest new trends in tech. So be sure to apply, or hey, send that link to a decision maker on your team. Now I wanna take a quick minute here to remind you all about one of my favorite resources and that is ransomware.org. You can find out everything you need to know about ransomware, how to prepare, prevent, and recover. This site is jam packed with information, helpful tips, checklists, strategic approaches, case studies, everything you need in one place. So wherever you are in your ransomware preparedness journey, there is something for you at ransomware.org. Go check it out and start exploring. 
All right, I have one more exciting resource I have to tell you about today, and that is the Gorilla Guide Book Club. It's going to give you access to free enterprise IT books authored by top industry experts. So you can stay up to date on trending enterprise technology. And yes, these books will work on your Kindle, your mobile device, and as I said, they are completely free. You can download these awesome resources at gorilla.guide, and there's a link for you in that handouts tab as well. All right, well, we have covered a lot of important things already, and I don't know about you all, but I am excited to dive in. So let's get going. All right, folks, so today we are talking about improving security and ransomware preparedness in healthcare environments. And I love days like today when we get to dive into a specific industry and explore the opportunities and the challenges that are unique to you, especially when it comes to something as important as security planning. I'm very excited to be here with you today for this conversation. I can't wait to dive in. I do have a few quick things to tell you about before we get started here. So first up, again, my name is Jess Steinbach. I am absolutely thrilled to be your moderator here today, along with my friend and fellow moderator at Actual Tech Media, that's Scott Becker. He'll be joining us in a little bit here, and Keith Ward, who is here with us today on live chat. But of course, before we get started, we have to talk about prizes. So on the Ecocast today, you could win one of three $300 Amazon gift cards that we will be giving away to three lucky winners who are here and present live with us at the Ecocast. Now, as I mentioned in the housekeeping chat this morning, you can find the full T's and C's linked for you in the handouts tab. So if you do have any questions, they are waiting for you there. All right, well, that was it. I told you I'd keep this intro short and sweet. We're ready to dive in already. Up next, I am very excited to introduce you to our keynote speaker. Now, many of you have heard us chat with him before, so you already know we are in for a great start here today. Now, to kick things off, we are going to explore some of the best practices, hot tips for improving your security and ransomware preparedness in your environment. We will be chatting with Brian Posey, 21 times Microsoft MVP and commercial astronaut candidate. How cool is that. Uh, always a fun time when we get to chat with Brian, so let's dive in. Brian, thank you so much for joining us again today. The platform is all yours. Take it away. Hello, greetings, and welcome. I'm Brian Posey, a 21-time Microsoft MVP and commercial astronaut candidate. And in today's presentation, I want to spend just a few minutes talking about security and ransomware in a healthcare environment. One of the first things that you need to know about ransomware with regard to healthcare is that ransomware attacks are on the rise. In a recent report from ChiefHealthCareExecutive.com dated March 24th, 2023, the publication reported that ransomware attacks are on the rise. And what was perhaps the most disturbing about this report is that it indicated that healthcare was hit with the most ransomware attacks of any critical sector. The report went on to say that the FBI had received 870 reports of ransomware attacks aimed at organizations belonging to 16 critical infrastructure sectors. It then said that the healthcare sector topped the list with 210 reports of ransomware attacks well ahead of any other sector and at least twice as many as most others. And if you're curious about how this report broke down, next to healthcare, the industry that received the most ransomware attacks was critical manufacturing with 157 attacks. From there, government facilities suffered 115 attacks. IT or information technology received 107 attacks. And then the financial services industry received 88 attacks. Now, obviously, ransomware attacks are expensive and damaging in even the best of circumstances. We've all heard the stories of organizations suffering massive financial loss as a result of a ransomware infection. But this particular study found that in healthcare, the problems go beyond the financial aspects. The study found that ransomware attacks aren't just hampering operations and costing money, they're affecting patient care. So in other words, lives are actually being put at risk as a result of ransomware infections. The Ponymon Institute conducted a survey, and in that study they found that 45% of healthcare IT pros reported complications for medical procedures due to ransomware attacks. And that number was only 36% in 2021. So think about that for a moment. 36% is a big number, and yet that increased all the way up to 45%. So ransomware is having a very real impact in healthcare environments. 
Beyond that, the report went on to say that Common Spirit Health suffered a ransomware attack last fall that impacted 620,000 patient records, according to the health department. It then went on to say that the system took its electronic medical records offline and had to reschedule some patient appointments. So there were patients that weren't receiving care as a result of this ransomware attack. And then the report went on to say that cybersecurity analysts say that ransomware groups are targeting hospitals because they know that many will pay to get their systems restored and patient records are valuable on the dark web. So what this is really saying is that cybersecurity groups are specifically targeting hospitals simply because they know that the stakes are so high. Remember, a ransomware gang's entire goal is to get paid. They want to inflict enough damage and enough suffering that the organization that they're attacking will have no choice but to pay them in order to get their systems back online. So the key to beating these ransomware gangs is to make it so that your organization isn't going to pay the ransom if attacked. So how do you do this? Well, there are a couple of things that you need to be thinking about. When it comes to ransomware, the absolute best thing that you can do is to prevent an attack from occurring in the first place. Now, I get it, sometimes this is easier said than done, but one of the real keys to preventing an attack from occurring in the first place is to acknowledge that being compliant is not the same as being secure. In healthcare, we're all subject to the HIPAA compliance rules. And part of HIPAA is the High Tech Act, which pertains to IT systems and the way that those systems need to be managed and secured in order to prevent the unauthorized disclosure of electronic protected health records. So simply by complying with the HIPAA requirements and the High Tech Act, there's already a measure of security in place. But keep in mind that the security measures that are put in place as a part of adhering to regulatory compliance might not necessarily be adequate to keep your organization fully secured. Those requirements simply represent the basics. You can go well beyond the requirements that are outlined in those regulations, and I would highly recommend doing so. Take a really hard look at your organization and identify any security weaknesses that may exist so that you can better secure your organization and put yourself in a better position to defend against ransomware. Now, when it comes to ransomware, it's also important to consider the differences between human-operated ransomware and automated ransomware. Automated ransomware is purely opportunistic. We've all seen examples of automated ransomware. A user clicks on something that they shouldn't, ransomware gets downloaded, and then a few minutes later, that user's system is encrypted. That's automated ransomware. Human-operated ransomware works a little bit differently. Typically, an attacker will find a way into your system. They'll stay there for a period of time, potentially months, exploring your system, learning all of the various nuances, and then when they're ready, they'll plant and execute ransomware within your system. And the study that I talked about on the last two slides primarily pertains to human-operated ransomware. In other words, ransomware gangs are actively going out and specifically targeting healthcare organizations. But whether we're talking about automated ransomware or human-operated ransomware, the real key to preventing that is to keep an infection from happening in the first place. And while you need to be examining all of the various security measures that are in place on your network, user training is also essential. Because very often, a ransomware infection will take hold as a result of something that a user has done. So it's important to train your users not to do something that's going to trigger a ransomware infection. And one of the ways that you can do that is through attack simulation training. Now, for those who might not be familiar with attack simulation training, it's essentially a mechanism that you can use to send your users fake phishing attacks through email. So these fake phishing attacks look exactly like a real phishing attack, except that they're not designed to be malicious. Instead, it's designed to see which of your users is going to fall for that phishing attack and click on something that they shouldn't. And then once you've identified those users, you can enroll them in training to help them to not fall for those types of attacks in the future. So attack simulation training can be extremely effective in helping to reduce the risk of ransomware infections. As important as it may be to focus on security and end user training, you also need to focus on your backups because a simple fact of life is that eventually a ransomware attack probably is going to happen in spite of all of your best efforts. And backups represent your best chance of being able to recover from a ransomware attack without having to pay the ransom. So 
consider what you can do to your backups to make them more effective because human ransomware attacks will often go out and attack your backups. The idea being that if the gang can put your backup out of commission, then you have no chance of restoring a backup and your only ability to recover from the ransomware attack is to pay the ransom. So consider what you can do to harden your backups and to prevent them from being made useless during a ransomware attack. And there are some various things that you can do. For example, you might consider using immutable storage because immutable storage can't be erased or changed. So if ransomware attacks your backups, then yes, your backups might be encrypted, but there should still be an older version of those backups within that immutable storage that you're able to recover. Another thing that you can do is to make an air gap backup. An air gap backup works in conjunction with your regular backup but it's written to removable media so that that way it can be ejected from the system and kept offline out of the reach of ransomware. Incidentally, however, if you're ever put in a situation where you need to recover from an air-gapped backup, then it's extremely important to make sure that your system is thoroughly clean before you ever mount that air-gapped backup. Otherwise, the air-gapped backup could become infected. So I'm just about out of time. Thank you for attending. And I'll go ahead and turn it over to the next presenter. Well, thank you, Brian. And that'll be me for now, because we have a quick question for everybody in the audience out there. And we are wondering, what is your time frame for adding new or updating existing IT solutions in your organization? So obviously, we're just getting started today. And there might be a few of you that are kind of thinking maybe longer term, there might be a few of you that are thinking that you have uh, some really pressing time sensitive needs. And there might be some of you here today that are just kind of collecting information. You're not sure what your timeline is, because you're not totally sure what you need. And all of those answers are fine. This is just us getting an idea of where you're at. So we can make sure that we're continuing to get you the info that you need, the speakers that you want to hear from the solutions that you're looking for in the timelines that are important to you. So just give us an idea of where you're at. Uh, and while you're doing that, I'm going to get things ready to move on. So last chance to click the poll going, going, going and and gone. Okay, here we are. We are going to jump into our EcoCast today, and it is my pleasure to introduce our first two expert presenters. Definitely starting out on a high note today because we have with us Martin Crew, Senior Director, Solutions and Partner Technologies, and Michael Pinto, Senior Regional Sales Director, both at Gigamon. Now, Martin and Michael, thank you so much for being here to get us started today. Uh, I know you both have some great info planned for the audience today, a little bit of a back and forth, which I'm excited to sit in on. Uh, so, Martin, I'm going to hand things right on over to you. Take it away. Thanks, Jess. Appreciate the introduction. Hello, everybody. My name is Martin Crew. I'm joined by one of my colleagues, one of our healthcare specialists, Michael Pinto. He'll be joining us a little later on in the session today. And Michael and I are going to be talking about how Gigamon can help protect your healthcare organization against the risks of ransomware. What we're going to do, I'm going to do a very brief introduction to Gigamon to sort of set the context. And then Michael and I are going to get into a detailed discussion based on his experience of helping secure some of the most demanding healthcare organizations in the United States. So a little bit about Gigamon. So we've been around 15 years or so, and we are a specialist in networking and security. We work in a sector that's now defined by the analysts as the deep observability sector. And that means we see everything that moves on the network, all the traffic, that moves regardless of the workload, regardless of the source, the environment, we see everything. And we'll talk more about that in a minute. One of the key reasons we wanted to join this webinar is because healthcare is one of our primary markets. So as you can see at the bottom of the screen, we have about 4,000 customers worldwide. Those customers are large, distributed organizations with very, very complex security and networking requirements. And that's one of the reasons why we're a great fit for large-scale healthcare organizations, whether they're providers or whether they're on the pay side of the, net, of the network. So we have about 800 customers in this space. And as I said, we'll be joined by Michael, who's one of the, the experts on supporting that customer base. So let me give you a little bit of a deeper look at what Gigamon does. I've got two slides and then we'll get into the conversation. 
So Gigamon provides, as we said, deep observability into all of the data in motion, all the traffic that's running across your network. And by network, we mean hybrid cloud network. We can work purely on premises, we can work purely on cloud, but most of the customers that we have are operating in this hybrid environment. So we support all of the major infrastructures. So whether they're the on-prem, whether it's private cloud, whether it's public cloud, almost likely a combination of all of those, our software works on all those platforms and is fully interoperable. What it does is it sits between the workloads that are generating the traffic and the tools that you're using to secure and manage uh, those applications and the workloads. So whether the workload is in a data center, whether it's virtualized, or whether it's in an infrastructure as a service platform like AWS, Azure, GCP, really doesn't matter to us. We see all the traffic that's being generated. We understand the traffic. We understand what tools need to see that traffic to secure the network and then we optimize the traffic. So what do we mean when I say we optimize the traffic? So we really do four key things, and this is really the value add of Gigamon. So the first thing is we have very, very flexible access mechanisms. So whether you need to, to get the traffic from a physical device using span ports, which is not our preferred option, or using a dedicated tap, which is far and away the better way to do it, whether it's using the virtual equivalents of that or using some of the cloud native technologies like mirroring or secure tunneling, we have a number of different ways we can get to the traffic that's being generated by the workloads. We then look at that traffic. We do deep packet inspection. We understand what the traffic is. We understand where it needs to go and then we send it on its way. So from one tap, we can send traffic to any number of different tools on the network. So all the tools are seeing the same traffic, except that we know the characteristics of those tools. We know exactly what they need to see, what they don't need to see, and we know the format in which they best need to receive that traffic. So we take the traffic through a transformation process before we send it to those tools. And then finally, we can enrich the traffic. Because we're seeing all the traffic on the network, we don't just send a packet and say, that's it. We can send a packet, but we can also send contextual information from what we're seeing on the rest of the network. And that means that the network security tools uh, that's, that you're using have the appropriate context to be able to precisely and quickly identify potential issues. So the tools we support, we support over 200 different tools. And that's really important with a topic like ransomware because there is no one tool that's gonna give you security from ransomware. You know, you need tools that protect your email, you need endpoint detection, but as well as those things, you need visibility into the network because when things like endpoint security get, get bro broken, bypassed or whatever, the network becomes your first line of defense. And I think this is particularly important uh, in a couple of contexts. So I'm going to draw on a report that came out just a week ago, produced by a company called Sophos, who are one of the, the security leaders on a global basis. And there were a couple of things in that report that are, were really interesting. And this also form a segment, my discussion with Michael. So the first thing is that where does ransomware come from? So many people primarily understand ransomware as being something that comes through email through phishing attacks, malicious email of various kinds. But the analysis from this report says that the most common source of uh, malware and ransomware on the network is not compromised email or compromised credentials. It's vulnerabilities that just exist on the network. So attackers detect where those vulnerabilities are and then they inject the ransomware, the malware through those points of vulnerability. So having this view into everything on the network, all the blind spots, and being able to make sure that you can eradicate those blind spots is actually critical in this process of fighting against ransomware. The second thing that the report highlighted was that we've now moved on from the era in which ransomware grabs a file, encrypts it, and says, if you want to access this file, it's going to cost you X. 
an increasing number of ransomware attacks are both ransomware and data breach or data theft attacks. So about 30% of all of the attacks that are now being reported include the data being stolen, not just encrypted. So again, one of the critical things that a tool like Gigamon can do is we can see not just the traffic coming on the network or moving across the network, we can see the traffic that people are trying to exfiltrate or take off of the network. So they do this by techniques like port spoofing, and we're not gonna go into that in detail now. But these are mechanisms to force people into thinking the network is behaving in a normal way when in fact it's being used, in this case, to actually enable data to be stolen by attackers. So for those of you who think, you know, uh, this is a simple one-dimensional problem, it's not. It's a problem solved by many, many different tools. And you really need a layer like Gigamon, a visibility layer or observability layer that makes sure those tools are seeing everything that's happening on the network. So with that, I'm going to wrap up my little intro. I am going to switch off the screen share and introduce my colleague from New Jersey, uh, Michael Pinto. Mike, say hello and introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. My name is Michael Pinto. I'm a Gigamon Regional Sales Director here in the New York area. Nice to meet you. Thanks for having us today. And it's fair to say, Michael, you work with a lot of the most demanding healthcare organizations and hospital groups in, in the States, right? Absolutely. We, <clears throat> we work closely with a number of hospitals in the tri-state area to solve mission-critical performance and security challenges. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, thank you. And thanks for joining cool. us today. Okay, so, you know, one of the things that you and I hear a lot uh, and it, uh, not just you and I, in the industry, we hear this real sort of cliched phrase, you can't secure what you can't see. Um, how do you, when you're working with people in hospitals, how do you make sure that those organizations can actually see everything on the network so that they can take it to the next step and secure it? Absolutely. So Martin, I'm, I'm a big fan of, uh, of uh, the need for pervasive visibility, right? And so one of the most common uh, topics that we discuss when we're first talking to someone who has an interest in gaining better understanding of their environment to solve application or network performance challenges or security challenges is, well, what does data in motion mean to you and where, where do you think that you could improve? So we try to find those inefficiencies or blind spots that exist today. And generally the most common scenario is organizations are relying on SPAN as their data source for network data. And then they're using a number of logging solutions or metric solutions, which give high level summary data about a specific event or device. But what they don't have is they don't have the payload and they don't have the end to end network communication. And this is really key to actually be able to follow a network communication and identify where an application failed or where there's jitter or latency, or to look for lateral movement and identify a threat actor's actions within the environment. So gaining access to the packets is really the key. And so we always attempt to try to find where those blind spots are, and then advise on ways to improve visibility through our, our offering, which is deep uh, observability pipeline, which we achieve through network tap and aggregation uh, capabilities. Yeah, that's exactly right. So one of the unique things, what's well, not unique about the, the hospital environment, um, but it's one of the particular things about that environment is that most large hospitals now have tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of different internet of medical device sure. things that are attached to the network. And of course they, are, they pre present a unique problem because many of them cannot have a security agent um, on board. Uh, which is what m many devices rely on to get this level of security that they need. So what are the particular problems of securing these Internet of Medical Thing devices? And what is it that Gigamon does uh, that can make our customers confident about that? Absolutely. So, um, Martin, I mean, the, the problem is simple. It's just it's just pure scale. Right. So when you're when you're talking about a large scale hospital system, they have uh, hundreds of clinician sites, they have, they have large campuses, multiple data centers, backup data centers, um, tens of thousands of employees serving hundreds or thousands of patients. 
Um, they have thousands of employees or tens of thousands of clinicians and nurses and researchers. And so the, the number of devices in an environment like that is enormous. You're, you're easily looking at tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of different types of medical devices, fire suppression systems, security systems, um, health, uh, different like uh, blood pressure monitoring system. There's all sorts of different systems that all need to be monitored and managed. We also commonly hear that there are challenges with clinician systems with EMR and EHR applications to actually look at medical records. There's latency involved with those systems. We also hear often that radiology systems have challenges with latency and, and other, um, other performance aspects like that. And if we think about it from a, um, an ability to serve the patient and have better patient outcome, every minute that the application is down or it's delayed or not working optimally, that's, that's then, that then delays the ability of the clinicians, the doctors, the nurses to be able to solve for a better patient outcome. And so that's a really important criteria there, um, not only to do with the fact that there may be inefficiencies, but it, it, has to, it goes back to who's affected. And so yes, the doctors and the nurses are affected, but ultimately the patient is. So trying to align on how to solve for patient outcome it means that the staff that are actually solving for major health challenges need to be able to access their different software systems and use their hardware systems to, to provide better patient care. And so when we look at a healthcare environment, what we try to identify is what are the devices that are within that environment? Where are those blind spots? And how can acquiring packets as they move through the environment from remote site to campus, from campus to core, from core to data center, from data center to backup, how can we ensure that if there is a performance challenge or an application problem or a security event, we're able to help rapidly identify where that failure or event occurred to minimize the mean time to know and the mean time to resolve. Mm -hmm. And so by gaining access to all of the network traffic live on the wire, or within the virtual environment, whether it's VMware, Nutanix, or OpenStack, or the public cloud or containers, getting access to that network traffic, that east-west network traffic in flight, and getting it to a tool like an IoT or OT tool enables security groups as well as performance teams to rapidly understand what's happening within their environment. And they're able to do this at a much higher fidelity level because they have the context of the packets which is the only way to actually understand what's happening in the environment. Yeah, that's absolutely right. I mean, trying to understand what's happening in an environment, for example, while you're under a ransomware situation, trying to understand that from logs, which are obviously historic information, yeah. and which can sell themselves be compromised and tampered with, that's a very ineffective way to try and resolve real-time problems. So let's just talk about this. Uh, this issue of um, decryption and encryption a little bit. Sure. So we were just talking about IoT, and obviously very few IoT or IOMT workloads are actually um, encrypted. Um, but a lot of ransomware attacks do come through encrypted payloads being embedded in, for example, emails. So what can Gigamon do to actually help um, inspect encrypted traffic and respond if they detect malware. Absolutely. So, um, as you said, lots of lots of uh, executables are sent via email, um, whether it's a, a large, broad phishing attack or it's a spear phishing attack. But that what appears to be innocuous file is sent to an employee. They click on the executable. It's downloaded in the environment, and most likely, it's not going to trigger a um, a known signature or her heuristic event. And it may sit and idle within the environment. And then from there, we have seen that generally attackers will monitor the environment for many weeks or months. They'll move laterally and they'll try to gain access to higher level credentials to be able to exfil data or execute ransomware on Crown Jewel or major systems and services within the environment to ensure their, uh, their outcomes are met, their goal of, um, of stealing data or of, or of getting paid. And so if you consider the fact that the file is being executed across the wire and then it's giving the threat actor the ability to move laterally 
over the wire, having access to that unencrypted network traffic is critical to be able to understand that end-to-end -end communication, understand who your top talkers are, who are these anomalous talkers, why are files moving in a suspicious or risky way throughout the environment, or why is data being exfilled from the environment, and is this a normal transfer of data, or is this a, an actual threat action that's occurring? And so having access to encrypted, excuse me, to unencrypted data is critical. And so what we specialize in is providing either out of band SSL decryption, or we'll sit in line on the wire and we'll perform inline TLS 1.3 decryption. Gigamon supports all major cipher suites. So we have the ability to inspect the traffic, decrypt the traffic, make as many copies of decrypted traffic as are required to serve multiple copies of that decrypted traffic to multiple tools. So if there's an ATP and an IPS and a, and a WAF and a network performance monitoring tool and an application performance monitoring tool, a packet capture recording appliance, and many other tools that are common within these environments, if they need to see access to that decrypted traffic, we can feed that to them. Yeah. And then more importantly, within the healthcare environment, you have, the, you have a variety of compliance requirements mm -hmm. such as PII, HIPAA, and other types of responsibilities to not allow personally identifiable information to be in the clear. And so what Gigamon then does as well is we have the ability to mask social security numbers, patient names, financial data, specific healthcare terminology. We also have the ability to slice some of that sensitive data that's not required to solve performance and security challenges. So that way only the content that's necessary to solve a performance problem or a security problem is shared with the tools in an unencrypted way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there was a lot in that answer. It's a great answer. But I mean, this, this whole issue of securing east-west traffic is becoming more and more of an issue for all of our customers, particularly healthcare organizations. It's no longer enough just to say, yeah, we're decrypting at the firewall, we know what the traffic is. That's just not a, an efficient way to do things. Um, what is Gigamon's approach to actually doing the decryption if it's not at the firewall level? Well, so we're aggregating all of the network traffic from multiple points within the environment. And then once the traffic is inside of the Gigamon aggregator, we are then performing inline TLS decryption, right? So we're decrypting the traffic and then we're sharing that decrypted traffic with the tools that need to see it. Yeah. So, I mean, that's taking the workload off the firewalls, right? And I mean, firewalls are designed to keep the bad guys out. They're not designed to do intensive mathematic processes. Like Absolutely. There's a number of different ways to, to perform decryption. We see some organizations use proxies. We see some organizations use firewalls. And our concept from a efficiency perspective, from a tool consolidation perspective, it makes a lot of sense. Why would you use a firewall and an IPS system to perform a high CPU utilization process such as decryption when it's designed to inspect and block and allow traffic? Yeah. It's, it doesn't, from a, from a resource design perspective, it seems inefficient to burden a firewall with that high level, high process task. So because we are purpose built and designed for complete network traffic aggr aggregation, we acquire all of the traffic and then we transform it. During that transformation process, that's where we can decrypt traffic and share specific copies of specific applications that we've decrypted with specific tools. So this enables a much more efficient and effective method of traffic management to support your performance and security tooling um, outcomes. Yeah. So one of the things that you've touched there and we always touch on in conversations with our healthcare customers is within their environments, they have many, many tools that they're using to secure the network. You touched on one, which is the IPS side of things. Now, before uh, we started recording this conversation, we were discussing one of your healthcare customers um, that had an issue with one of their IPS systems. And there's a specific capability in Gigamon that allowed them to get around that and potentially, um, well, not potentially, and ensure that healthcare patient outcomes are not compromised. Can you just take a minute and just talk us through that, please? 
Yeah, absolutely. So recently, um, one of our customers had an issue where the IPS was malfunctioning and that malfunction was putting the network at risk of failure. And so on the fly during what, what is a 24 by seven environment, which is a hospital, right? So it, there, there is no maintenance window. There is no downtime. There's always patients to be served and there's always clinicians working with those patients that need access to their various systems. So on the fly, upon discovery that there were suspected tools that were causing problems to the network, major latency issues and performance problems. The customer used inline bypass to then systematically identify which tool was failing and causing latency and was able to get an RMA, replace the box, put it back in path and continue protecting the network. So the, the question becomes security wants inline tools in their environment to protect the environment and network wants the complete opposite. They want as few tools as possible in path on the network. And so Gigamon creates this perfect bridge between network operations and security teams by enabling the ability of security to put inline tools on the wire and protecting the network from tool failure, which ensures that the network stays online. And so this capability inline bypass ensures that dynamic flexibility and operational performance. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, this balance between security, performance, simplicity, I mean, this is one of the battles that all of our customers deal with. And it's really one of the reasons why having something like Gigamon that provides this pervasive visibility and makes sure tools get all the information that they need, not more, not less. It's yeah. really one of the significant things here. So, Michael, one last wrap up question. So sure. if you get sat down with a healthcare client and they're wanting to discuss how can you help me manage my ransomware exposure? What are the two or three key things that you draw their attention to? Well, we're going to look for how do they tip it, how do they today understand their network and where are those blind spots? Where do they exist? And then we're also going to look for what are their data sources? Are they just relying on logs or what the industry is calling melt, which is metrics, events, logs, and traces? Are they just feeding log traffic to a variety of different alerting tools and using some antivirus or EDR, MDR systems along with the firewall? Or do they have a proactive hunt team? Do they have the ability to forensically investigate events that have occurred because they're recording traffic? And do they have tools that are inspecting data in motion? And so what we're going to look for are where do those blind spots exist and what data sources are we using and what tools do we have available that we can enhance? And so from there, we'll work with them. Generally, we can start small and we can grow over time or we can, we can deploy and cover the whole environment right away. It's typically up to the customer and their specific ability to, to enhance that environment. But what we're going to look to do is eliminate blind spots, get access to all network traffic to the right tool. And we're going to, we're going to focus on ensuring that their performance teams, so those that are responsible for network and application and their security teams are able to more efficiently and effectively understand what is happening in my network and how do we resolve these problems. Absolutely. And that's the concept that we call deep observability, the ability to see everything that's happening on the network, regardless of the source, regardless of the tools that need to see it and make sure those tools are seeing it in the optimized format. Absolutely. So, Michael, thank you so much for taking time out to join us today. Thank you, Martin. It's been an education for me and I'm sure for our audience as well. Yeah, thank you very thanks. much. Everyone. Back to you. Thank you guys. Uh, wow, I have to agree with Martin. That was uh, I was I was taking notes. I was uh, you know absorbing. It was just a, a really wonderful presentation. Uh, Martin, always a pleasure to see you on. on Thank you, Martin. Well done. Have you here with us? Uh, now, before we take off, though, Martin, I'm going to sneak in a question for you. You've okay. been asking a lot of questions today. It's your turn. Uh, if somebody out there is very excited, wants to jump in and, and get rolling with Gigamon, what do you recommend as that first step? Okay, well, first step, I think it should always be to go to the website, which is gigamon.com, nice and simple. And there you'll find a lot of resources. You'll find some specific solutions for healthcare organizations. You'll also find some general stuff, like if you're moving towards a zero trust architecture, what are the building blocks towards that? 
You'll find a lot of customer reference studies as well, and a lot are healthcare based. So you can understand the value that some of your industry peers are getting from Gigamon. You'll also find next step things in terms of, hey, I want to get hands on with this. We can do that. We've got um, cloud based environments that you can test. We've got uh, city tours where we come to you and do what we call immersion days to get people hands on. And we also have uh, coming up for the remainder of this year, the Gigator event, which is a global event going around to all the major population centers and bringing our execs, bringing our product specialists to a city near you so that you can actually understand what we can do and get time face to face discussing with us how we can help. I love that. Yeah, Martin and I were talking about the Giga Tour before our event kicked off this morning. And, and uh, man, I want to go to the Australian one. I'm in. <laughs> Not near me at all. <laughs> that sounds great. Uh, well, thank you so much, Martin. Again, thank you, Michael. This has been such a pleasure. I appreciate you both being here today. Thank You're you, Jess. You're very welcome, Jess. Thanks, everybody. All right, and now we have a question for all of you out there. You know the drill. What we're wondering is what additional information you would like to get about the Gigamon solution. So obviously the information that we just got is, is a tip of the iceberg and there's so much more to learn. And especially when it comes to something when we're looking specifically at, you know, an industry like healthcare, there are so many specific niche questions and needs and compliance issues and all kinds of things. So there's a lot of research to be done, a lot of conversations yet to be had when you're considering a new solution. And what you can do is click on that poll right now to let Gigamon know how they can get you started. Do you want to jump right into that conversation? Do you want to read some data sheets? Uh, do you want to get into a demo? Whatever it is, click on the poll and they will follow up with you in exactly the way that you want. Uh, the other thing you can do right now is click on that handout. You can download the Gigamon ebook uh, without Gigamon or with Gigamon Unseen Threats. Wait, no, I'm reading that wrong. Without Gigamon, Unseen Threats can lurk in your mix. Oh boy, you'd think it was Friday, my brain, I tell you. Uh, but what's great about this book is you get to dive in and read a little bit of an exploration uh, of, on the deep observability that we were just hearing about from, uh, from Martin and, uh, and how that deep observability can actually expose those threats that were previously unseen. So uh, hence the without Gigamon, unseen threats can lurk in your midst. It's a great read, a great follow-up uh, to the conversation that we just sat in on with our, our two awesome speakers here today. Uh, so if you're looking to learn a little bit more, uh, follow up on what we heard from Martin and Michael, click on that ebook, download that and save that for later. Now, while you're doing that and clicking on the poll, I am going to go ahead and give away our first prize. So right now we have a $300 Amazon gift card for you all. Now I'll remind you again that you do need to be here alive and present in order to win. Our very first lucky winner with us here today is James Brady of Minnesota. James Brady of Minnesota, congratulations. You won a $300 Amazon gift card. Now, as of always, we'll be in touch about claiming your prize after we wrap. Don't forget there are still two more chances to win an Amazon gift card today. Plus, we have that best question gift card coming at you from each session. So every time you ask a question, you are entered to win. We're reviewing all of those questions asked after we wrap, and we will follow up with the winners after we wrap up our EcoCast today. But for now, let's keep things moving right along because we have another awesome presenter in the wings, and I am so excited to introduce you all to our next speaker on today's EcoCast. Now, this is another familiar voice here, so many of you already know that we're in for a pretty great chat. We are going to be hearing from Zubin Talavia, Advisory Sales Engineer at Rubrik. Zubin, thank you so much for being here with us again on the EcoCast. Now, I know you've got some great info planned for the audience today, uh, and Scott Becker is going to join you for a little Q&A after with the audience. So keep those questions coming in, folks. Lots of great things coming our way. All right, Zubin, take it away. Hello, I'm Zubin Talavia, Advisory Solutions Architect at Fulbrick. And I'm going to spend the next 15, 20 minutes uh, giving an overview of how Rubric helps uh, customers and companies, specifically in healthcare, improve their security and ransomware preparedness. Uh, and also kind of have a posture that uh, prevents companies and healthcare institutions from paying the ransom. So let's start off with uh, a little bit of history of, of, of Rubric. So Rubric was incorporated in 2014 we came on the scene at VMworld in 2015. We won best of world, best of VMware, uh, VMworld in that year. And 
a claim to fame at that point was a, a completely different architecture than what backup legacy vendors were used to. Uh, we had a zero trust architecture, which was built for security and, and cloud in mind. We provided immutable backups. So none of your backups could be compromised in an event of ransomware attack. We also had the ability to logically air gap those backups um, and provided um, business level SLAs or policies and basically combined uh, various aspects of the backup platform into a single simple uh, deployment uh, platform that allowed you to instantly recover and also kind of do your backups uh, really fast. Fast forward a few years uh, when customers started really migrating to the cloud, we started providing a single pane of glass for any workloads that were on-prem or in the cloud that were run as either platform as a service, um, SQL or VM or Oracle running in the cloud as SQL or Oracle, and also SaaS platforms like M365. We provided the ability at that point to write out to the cloud for long-term archive, or even protect applications running in the cloud, and then provide a granular orchestrated recovery options for them to recover the data back in the cloud or, or on-prem. 27, 2017, uh, 2019 is when we kind of came across, I would say 2019 is when we came across our first um, ransomware scenario, where uh, one of our customers called and said, hey, you know, looks like my production systems are, are impacted, are encrypted, uh, what's going on? We realized that rubric was safe because we didn't be able to backups. Um, so they were able to recover the backup. But what we also then started building uh, solutions around quick recovery and ransomware so that we could monitor your backups for any ransomware uh, situations. We would then provide them with tools to discover any sensitive data, uh, monitor your systems, your NAS, your file systems, your unstructured data for any sensitive information that may be out there. And then we also provide a way to hunt for threats um, within those backup platforms so we can get a clean recovery point. Now, how do we do this, right? So as you know, businesses are under attack every day, specifically in healthcare, right? 73% of the data breaches were in healthcare. Now, companies put in millions, thousands of dollars towards huge investments, right? To protect their endpoints, protect the perimeter. But attackers are still getting in. All you need is one person to click on something and, 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 you're, and you're hacked. So there is a gap of protection at the point of data, right? In the past, IT institutions and, I, and CIOs and execs you'd have, had to worry about you know, disaster scenarios that were rare, like fire, flood, you know, like somebody fat fingering something. Now you get targeted ransomware attacks that can happen every day. And when that happens, uh, I mean, it, it brings the business to a crippling halt, right? There have been known document, documented cases where, you know, hospitals have had to literally resort to a pen and paper to continue operations or uh, critical life-saving procedures have been halted because systems are down. So how does Rubric help, right? What does Rubric really solve? And it, basically what it does, it helps customer answer the following questions. If the attacker were to get in, Right? Are my backups protected? Are they secure? Right? That's your first, that's your last line of defense. You want to make sure that that's 100% secure. If the endpoint protection fails, do we know what the impact is? Do we know what the blast radius is? And then finally, the data is exfiltrated, which obviously will happen uh, in case of ransomware attack. Do we know what was exposed? Uh, what kind of data was it? And then obviously, you need to recover that very quickly. So, how can we identify? a quick recovery point, and then can we automate that automate, uh, remediation and have we tested it on a periodic basis? So these are some of the questions that uh, Rubrik has helped customers with. Now, why are we unique? And the unique vantage point is that we see everything in the data and everything that you back up, right? As you protect your infrastructure, whether it's VMs, SQL, Oracle, unstructured data, PAC systems, Epic, we can see that. Now, that data tells a story. It tells stories like, hey, which files have changed, when and where the malware entered the system. And then we also provide, can we can provide a time machine kind of a view, right, of, of, of your backups, which are immutable. So you have that gold copy. 
Now, we have the infrastructure to run this investigation, so you don't need to actually stand up anything on your own to do that. We don't replace your endpoint or network security. We complement it. And we kind of work with different various security tools to help you uh, recover your data in case your primary systems have an impact. So what we can really do and what we help uh, boards and executive and security teams answer are these critical questions, right? You know that your backups are gonna be protected. We will tell you the blast radius. We will also tell you if the data is exfiltrated, what kind of data it was. And then we will be able to provide a clean recovery point to you. And all that is based on our rubric security cloud, uh, which is um, <clears throat> uh, our SaaS platform. Uh, and I'll go through that in a little bit more detail in the next slides. So some of the positive business outcomes that customers have seen using rubric is a reduced loss of revenue because now they are down for a very little amount of time. They don't have to worry about the backups being compromised. They can quickly recover using a mass recovery tools that Rubrik provides. You can also avoid ransomware payments because you don't have to wait for the key to be delivered by the hacker. You already have a good backup. Um, it also also helped with cyber insurance coverage. Uh, you know, as you know, the premiums are skyrocketing. But if you provide them with uh, information on what Rubrik does and uh, you show them that you have Rubrik, that reduces your premium. Obviously that helps customers to protect their brand and their trust. And then the huge, also the other financial impact is you can reduce any regulatory fines and costs associated with any sensitive data loss because you can quickly uh, protect it. You can quickly kind of see what kind of data it was um, and you can pass your audits. So how this works is pretty straightforward, right? Whether your data is sitting in the on-prem data center, whether it's sitting in the cloud or whether it's sitting in, in a SaaS platform like uh, Office 365, we provide an immutable air gap copy of it, right? We also provide you with some metadata associated with that data and a timeline or a time series or a time machine kind of view of that data. Now, what we provide is a modern data protection solution that's cheaper, best, better, faster, um, that can uh, also detect encryption going on in the environment. Once we get that, we can also provide you along with that uh, the ability to discover any sensitive data that may be in your environment and where it is. And then once you have all that information, we can also provide you a way that if you were to be hit by an ransomware attack, you can always go back to um, using our threat hunting capabilities to figure out which backups have been compromised, which ones have not, because malware is not going to just infect your system on day one. It's going to be in your system for a few days before it impacts it. On average, malware stays in a system for about you know, 11 to 12 days. So if you have something that you're saving for about 15, 20 days or more, you can always go back to a good point in time and we'll tell you, you know, which is a good uh, snapshot of backup to recover from. And you can quarantine the ones that are not so you don't reinfect yourself. And then finally, we help you with risk assessment because you can now provide reports to your third-party auditors or internal auditors on the risk associated with, uh, with your environment. And we can provide you with different tools like isolated recoveries, cyber recoveries, and orchestrated recoveries to help you with your uh, testing of your recovery if you were to be hit by ransomware attack or any other DR. All that is uh, done by a SaaS platform called Rubrik Security Cloud. And more information can be uh, can be found um, on the website if you just search just search for Rubrik Security Cloud. So don't take my word for it. Uh, we have about 5,000 plus customers and growing. 100% of them have been protected. Um, no one has had to pay the ransom uh, who have gone with the solution and have had their primary systems compromised. Um, we also introduced a, a ransom warranty now that is uh, 10 million. Uh, it says 5 million, but it's actually 10 million now because we are so confident in our ability to, to secure customers' data, specifically in healthcare. Um, so kind of going to spend a couple of uh, slides talking about uh, two customers and their use cases and how, how Rubrik helped them. So Legacy Health was a large health system that many folks are aware of. Um, they had an old legacy outdated system that was just not cloud ready, just did not have all security features. They moved from that old system to Rubrik 
And what they, what they, what they saw was that uh, it was two, the Epic cache backups were about at least two times faster. Because of that, they were able to uh, meet the honor roll requirements, which kind of reduced their Epic uh, support bill, um, which, which was really good. It also saved them about 90% time savings in terms of management overhead. Uh, initially, they would have to maintain multiple servers, multiple locations, um, and a whole bunch of different um, uh, aspects of their, of their ancient uh, backup system. With Rubrik, they could concise it down to a couple of clusters, uh, which kind of really helped them with, uh, and using our automated policy engine, they could uh, reduce the time they spent on day-to-day -day backups and day-to-day -day management of that system. They also use Rubrik live mount capabilities to achieve almost near zero RTOs for some of the critical systems and recovering from them. And those are some of the key benefits that Legacy Health uh, note saw uh, as they moved to Rubrik. The other customer I'd like to talk to you about is Rush, which is actually a 600 bed, kind of a teaching hospital. Um, and what they were that they saw was, you know, that, hey, they also had a 365 uh, environment uh, that was growing. Uh, as you can see, the 30,000 users. They went with Rubrik for that, and they saw that, you know, the on-prem as well as the 365 environment was being protected by the same platform, which made the management overheads, you know, almost non-existent. Uh, they had a single pane of glass, single view, and their backups of four, uh, on the on-prem were four times faster, so were the restore times. But the key thing was that because they had um, all the Rubrik security features, they saw a 40% reduction in their cyber insurance premiums uh, because they were able to demonstrate what they had and what they could do with the solutions provided by Rubrik. So to end, folks, uh, to keep in mind that backup is not cyber recovery, right? If you have a backup solution today, um, you know, that does not mean you are covered. Backups can be compromised if you don't have a solid uh, solution like Rubrik in place. Uh, Rubrik is built for cybersecurity, uh, built for the cloud, and it has various features that come standard with the product, you know, like uh, two-factor authentication, uh, intelligent data lock, um, MFA, um, retention lock, uh, all those kind of different features that are that that should be standard with uh, any backup platform, which are not with many of the legacy and some of the newer ones, come standard with Rubrik. So please check us check us out www.rubrik.com slash healthcare um, for any uh, for specific healthcare um, white papers, any questions, any collateral um, that you're interested in. Thank you. All right, great. Uh, thanks, Subin. Great presentation. Um, and uh, we've got a bunch of questions coming in from the audience. Uh, first one, if, if you had one piece of advice for a healthcare environment or, or some best practices, uh, what would those be? Uh, that's a great question, Scott. So, um, you know, health institutions are at higher risk uh, for ransomware attacks uh, than any other industry. I would kind of say that because, you know, of the amount of attacks that we see at healthcare institutions, like out of the, uh, in 2021, um, out of the, you know, almost 53% of the attacks were for healthcare institutions. Um, and for customers that did not have rubric, uh, out of those 53%, almost about uh, 90, 90, 90 um, had like disruption to their uh, business because of the ransomware attack. So, one of the things that any health institution should do is to kind of have a robust uh, security uh, practice in place. Um, the questions they should ask is, you know, do I have a ransomware recovery plan? Uh, you know, DRs don't, uh, disaster recoveries like floods and, you know, natural disasters don't happen that much. And that's where most of the health institutions have been focusing on in the past. Mm -hmm. But those are rare events, right? Mm -hmm. The ransomware happens anytime and can happen frequently. So I think having a ransomware response plan is the first thing that you know any health institution should do. Two is they should be they should have a robust system in place that is sick uh, because backup and data protection is your last line of defense. You should have something that is immutable that cannot be compromised and can also help you pinpoint uh, you know any anomalies that can occur in your system. If you don't have that in place, uh, then you'll be probably struggling to discover your data 
And in many cases, sadly enough, you know, you'll end up paying the ransom because you will not be able to recover data from your existing solution uh, because it'll be compromised. Gotcha. All right. Yeah, great piece of advice there, Zubin. Thank you. Um, the next one we have here, they're asking, uh, what are the ways that PII and other protected data can be flagged from within rubrics tools? So, so rubric, uh, you know, basically, you know, as it backs up your data, it also looks at the metadata, right? So we look at file type, creation date, modification date, you know, we can also kind of look at other information that you want us to look at. Uh, for example, uh, we have a offering within our rubric security cloud portfolio called sensitive data monitoring. What that does is, you know, as your data is backed up, whether it's an you know, unstructured data, whether it's NAS, file systems, virtual machines, uh, physical systems, we will scan that those systems for any sensitive information that you tell us to scan for based on certain policies and analyzers that we have provided to you um, or you create on your own. So our sensitive data monitoring capabilities, which is part of our security cloud offering, will provide you like 30, 40 uh, predefined policies and about 50, 60 analyzers out of the gate, but you can create your own. And they look at things like HIPAA, PII, PCI, GDPR, you know, all the different standards. And as, and you can add your systems, you can basically say, hey, scan these systems for these policies and tell me where everything is. And this way, you know, it all happens at the back end. There are no endpoints. There is nothing that gets deployed on your production systems. And as after your backup is run or done, we will basically run the scan and present you that information, uh, which will be actionable uh, that you can kind of uh, go and either use for it purposes or just as more of a proactive security practice and, uh, you know, kind of control uh, what can be seen and who can see it. Gotcha. Yeah, those predefined policies sound, uh, sound awesome. Um, so, you know, here's a here's a great one to come in uh, for today. Does does Rubrik back up EHR systems like Epic and Meditech? Oh yeah, that is a good one. So yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, you know, Rubrik is um, has been backing up you know EHR systems like Meditech, Cerner, uh, Epic for a long time. In fact, we have almost about thirteen to fourteen percent of all Epic uh, customers use Rubrik. Oh, wow. Um, and we have some very large institutions, uh, especially in, you know, in New England, that have over 100 terabytes of Epic cache databases that are using Rubrik to protect it. <clears throat> now, the advantage of using Rubrik for EHR systems, especially, specifically Epic, is that Epic has honor roll requirements. What they mean is that Epic comes to the uh, health institutions and basically tells them, hey, look, if you can demonstrate, if you can show us, uh, that, hey, we can back up and restore an Epic database or Epic system within a set amount of hours based on your size, we will give you a break and support costs and uh, we'll give you other benefits. So in the past, traditional vendors struggled to do that because of the large volume of Epic data that was there. The way Rubrik is architected, the way we do this, we actually help customers meet their honor roll requirements. And an example is, you know, we have been able to back up a uh, 30 terabyte Epic database in, you know, seven or eight hours, able to restore it in about seven or eight hours. Now, because of that, they were able to meet the Epic role requirements, which reduced their, their Epic support costs, which can run into tens of thousands of dollars. Gotcha. All right. That, no, that sounds great. Um, it's really impressive uh, market share within the, within the Epic uh, you know, user base. Um, so, um, you, another one that's come in here, um, this question comes up a, a lot with, uh, with rubric presentations. How does, how does immutability work in, in rubric implementation? Oh, good one again. Um, so yeah, so rubric bytes out of the gate is immutable. What I mean by that is we have our own internal file system called Atlas file system. Uh, you can just, you know, Google it and there's a whole YouTube videos on more details if you want it. But basically out of the gate, uh, we do not expose our file system to any protocols like NFS, you know, SIFs, anything like that. Uh, when you write and backups are written to um, Rubrik, they're written to this like landing area, so as to speak, right? And then we have an internal protocol that will then write it 
uh, to the actual location where it's stored. Now, the data is always encrypted at rest, encrypted in flight. Um, so there's no way for any anyone to basically mount that file system and read the data, right? Because that's not even available for uh, end user consumption. Um, along with our immutable file system out of the gate, uh, we basically also have a whole a slew of features. Uh, we have something called retention lock, which prevents anything from being deleted accidentally or maliciously. We have two-person rule, which uh, allows you know, a couple of people to authorize changes before things are done. Uh, we have single sign-on, MFA integration, TOTP, and we also have features like intelligent data lock, which prevents people from accidentally or maliciously deleting data and wiping everything out. So rubric out of the gate was, you know, when it was built, was built for security in mind. And has all these features, uh, which you can read up on, on the rubric website, or, uh, you know, they can contact me after the call and I can send them more information. All right, super. Yeah, and we're coming up on time a little bit. We've got a few more questions in here from the audience. And if it's okay with you, Zubin, we'll uh, we'll send those along to you to, sure. uh, to get back to people. Um, sure. But maybe one good question to close out on here is, you know, when somebody's looking at rubric for, you know, protecting a healthcare environment, are, are there sort of certain key tools that your customers usually use sort of in combination, um, you know, from rubric to, uh, to get going? Yeah, absolutely, uh, Scott. So rubric, you know, is, uh, you know, is a data protection and cyber recovery platform. So out of the gate, you know, most majority of our customers use it to protect their infrastructure, whether it's just virtual machines, whether it's just Epic, SQL, Oracle, whatever it may be. But along with that, we offer uh, other solutions that easily that plug in on top of Rubrik through the security cloud, like ransomware, uh, monitoring and investigation, which, which looks for scans for anomalies and detects any ransomware events that might be occurring in environment. We provide you sensitive data discovery that will look for any sensitivity that could be exfiltrated or that could be you know that could be exposed uh, on the on the uh, in your systems. We also provide you um, a way to do threat hunting where you can actually go back and scan your backups or any malware that may be uh, in your system and then prevent you from uh, restoring that software uh, that that image or that backup so you don't reinfect yourself. And then finally, we give you tools that's part of Rubrik that allow you to quickly recover from any sense or sensitive from any cyber attack or any DR uh, by standing it up in its own separate environment, running your own scans, and then automatically move it into production at bulk. So all this is part of a rubric security cloud. Um, and it is um it's not separate tools, it's one tool that does it all, but just different um uh, options and switches. Gotcha. Excellent. Well, Zubin, uh, thanks so much for for informing informative presentation today and uh, and all of your insights here in the Q&A. Really appreciate your time. No worries. Thank you, Scott, for the opportunity. I appreciate it. All right. Well, thanks, Scott. And uh, thank you to Zubin for that awesome presentation and for sticking around to answer some audience questions. Uh, that was a lot of fun. And I want to point out to all of you now that we have that poll question up for you all. What we're looking for is what additional feedback, information, resources you would like to get from rubric so obviously we got a lot of great information from zubin and and it was really fun to listen in on that conversation between him and scott uh, but there's lots more to learn and there's lots more to dig in so click on the poll there let them know how they can follow up with you and while you're doing that it's also a good idea to check out the handouts tab and click on the rubric link they have some am amazing resources on their website uh, definitely worth exploring so click on that rubric link and go spend some time on the rubric website okay while you guys are clicking on the poll and oh opening that handout and getting all that cool information and follow up, I am going to go ahead and give away a prize. So we have another $300 Amazon gift card. Now a quick reminder that you must be present at the EcoCast in order to win. So our next lucky winner here with us today is Nathan Bollinger of Missouri. Nathan Bollinger of Missouri, congratulations. You have won a $300 Amazon gift card. As always, we will be in touch about claiming your prize after we wrap, and there are still more chances to win, so stay tuned for that. But for now, we are going to keep moving things right along in the EcoCast. And you know what, folks? Today's EcoCast is short and sweet and definitely packs a punch because here we are at our very 
very last presenter of the day and it is going to be jam packed with cool content and fun takeaways. I am so excited to introduce you all to our very last speaker of the day and that's Mike Nass's product marketing manager at Zerto. Now Mike will also be joined for some Q&A at the end uh, by Anthony Dutra, technical marketing engineer also at Zerto. Uh, and we're going to have a really fun little chat with the two of them once we wrap. So Mike, thank you so much for being here with us to close out this fascinating conversation today. I'm looking forward to your presentation, exploring Zerto a little bit more and very much looking forward to chatting with both you and Anthony at the end. So uh, let's, let's get things rolling. Mike, the platform is all yours. Take it away. Okay. Thank you, Jess. Um, so yeah, good, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, great to be here again with you, with you all. Uh, my name is Mike Nassis. I'm a product marketing manager at Zerto and also joined by my colleague, Anthony Dutra, who's a technical marketing uh, manager um, or engineer, and he'll be assisting uh, with some chat Q&A and, and the live Q&A as well. So I know we don't have too much time, so um, let's, let's jump right in. So I'm going to take the next 20 minutes or so to really talk to you about how Zerto can help you achieve and deliver uninterrupted healthcare experience and why leading healthcare organizations trust Zerto with their most critical of digital assets. Now, before we get into, you know, the, the whole um, ransomware piece and, and recovery piece, just want to give you a, a little bit of a foundation here of, of who we are and what we do. So, Zerto was founded on the idea that applications and data need to be protected at all times so our customers can run their businesses without any interruption. We saw that there was a gap in the marketplace and a need for this uh, continuous availability. Fast forward to 15 years later, and Zerto has really become synonymous with disaster recovery, ransomware resilience, and even multi-cloud mobility as well. And our nearly 10,000 customers around the globe can attest to this. So some of those customers, of course, are healthcare customers. And if we look at uh, the landscape of our healthcare customers from large to mid-size and even small organizations, including providers, hospitals, pharmaceutical companies, and even some non, non-for-profit organizations, they all have a variety of infrastructures and different needs. But the one thing that they share and the one thing that they have in common is that, is that singular need to run an uninterrupted business, no matter how technology evolves or what new threats develop. So as I'm sure everybody is well aware, Digital disruption across healthcare is really taking hold. Um, it's, it's really evident by the proliferation of things like telemedicine, artificial intelligence, mobile health apps, wearable devices, et cetera. And virtual care is really becoming a mainstay in, in many health systems. But with this digital disruption comes this tremendous amount of data that needs to be protected. And as a result, the healthcare industry has really become an attractive target for cyber attacks like ransomware attacks in recent years. So protecting that patient data while simultaneously improving care and ensuring continuous availability is, is really critical for, for organizations in this industry. So as I, as, meant, as I just mentioned, cyber attacks like ransomware have become an unfortunate reality in healthcare and it's really only getting worse. So a couple of stats I wanted to share with you guys today was First one, there has been a 74% increase in cyber attacks on health organizations worldwide uh, in 2022 versus 2021. So that's a huge number. And that there's, the increase was actually even bigger when you narrow it to U.S. health care organizations. So they saw an 85% increase in cyber attacks over that same period. So those numbers, of course, are, are pretty staggering. Now, Patients' medical history, condition, treatment, diagnosis information, things like that, those are typically the most compromised data in these attacks. Um, you know, medical insurance account numbers and medical provider accounts were also pretty high on that list. In the U.S. especially, the healthcare industry has actually been the most compromised industry by data breaches for three years in a row. So I'm showing you some of these stats, not obviously to – and some of you probably have already seen some of these or are familiar, but and this isn't really to obviously worry you, but this is more just to show you that the threats are there and they're real, but of course there is something that you can do about it. And this is where Zerto comes in. 
So when it comes to recovery time and downtime, a lot of organiz- a lot of healthcare organizations will maybe uh, utilize daily backups. But unfortunately, daily backups, while they do have their, their uh, the time and place for them, a lot of times they just won't cut it for the needs of healthcare organizations. When you're talking about uh, recovery point objectives of of, a, of an entire day and recovery time objectives of several hours, you know, up to eight hours or more, or more, the business impacts of being down that long just begin to add up quickly. The average cost of downtime can be about 250000 per hour, which would give you an $8 million impact. So that backups, you know, again, while there's a time and place, just won't cut it for our, for our purposes. What you're going to want instead is a tried and true disaster recovery solution like Zerto. We can actually get the recovery point objectives objective down to just seconds and get your RTOs down to mere minutes. You can actually pick a checkpoint that's just five or 10 seconds prior to the ransomware attack and then roll back within a few minutes to pick up right where you left off. Now, in particular, we're really meeting the challenges that our healthcare customers face across all the different platforms that you use with a laser focus on three key use cases. Multi-cloud mobility, disaster recovery, and the one that we're going to focus on the most today is, of course, ransomware resilience. And we're really focused on these to ensure that all of our customers can achieve that continuous protection regardless of the app or cloud that they're using and regardless of the threat, right? And all of this is based on a foundation of what we call CDP or continuous data protection, which is a space that Zerto pioneered uh, and has been a market leader in for over a decade. So I, I mentioned those, those super low RPOs and RTOs earlier. The, the way that we're actually able to achieve those is with our technology and some of our key differentiators that we, that we bring to the table compared to others in the market. First is our best in breed hypervisor based replication that is not only native, but also agentless to help ensure that continuous data protection for your business. Secondly, uh, our unique journaling technology ensures that you can recover and resume from any point in time from, from seconds on up. And third, we actually ensure all of your applications are moved or recovered as one single cohesive entity. So it's all about application consistency. And then lastly, of course, simplicity. That's at the core of everything we do. Simplicity of deployment, simplicity of use, built-in orchestration analytics. Again, if it's not simple, um, you know, why do it? So we'll be getting, we'll be touching on on these a little bit more uh, as as we go on. So at the heart of our solution is what I've mentioned, which is CDP or continuous data protection. This is really made possible by Zerto's block level replication. So this is actually near synchronous replication, which gives you the best of both both worlds. It's going to be less costly than synchronous replication, but there's also going to be no performance impact uh, like asynchronous replication with, with snapshots. And because we're, we sit at that hypervisor level um, and we're software only, we can be hardware and storage agnostic. So it's simply set up, replicate, and stays always on to keep you always protected uh, no matter what kind of uh, disaster or ransomware attack hits. Now, part of what makes this continuous data protection so powerful is the journaling capabilities that we have. So the, our journal actually tracks every single change made in your application on your server, and it logs these as checkpoints every five or 10 seconds. So with a traditional backup, you might lose several hours of data if you get hit with a ransomware attack. But with Zerto, let's say you get hit with a ransomware attack at 10 a.m. on the dot. It, you can actually simply roll back to 9.59 and 55 seconds and completely mitigate that infection. And now to solve for the, the, the challenge when we're looking at recovery, to solve for that challenge of recovering complex uh, enterprise apps, you really need to protect uh, your VMs as one cohesive unit. That way you avoid that inconsistent recovery of applications where each VM is being restored to a different point in time. So our, uh, what we call app-centric approach or app-centric protection actually protects and recovers at a granular level in the same state you left off for all of your apps. So we, when we create recovery points, all of the VMs will share the exact same checkpoint 
with right order fidelity across all of them. So when that application is recovered, every VM that makes up the application spins up from that same uh, recovery point, which allows you to protect and recover those complex multi-VM applications together as one cohesive unit and recover to the exact same point in time. Now, that simplified recovery that, that I've been talking about here is, is powered by a built-in orchestration engine. It's not a separate product that's been bolted on top or anything like that. It's, it's actually by, made by design. So with Zerto, you simply select the applications or servers you want to recover, pick the exact point in time you need down to the second, and then start the failover or restore process or, or even test. So when that, whenever there's a disruption or an outage or let's say a ransomware attack, this super fast recovery is exactly how you can dramatically limit the downtime and get back up and running within minutes. Now, we pair that orchestration engine I just mentioned with automation that extends from top to bottom. So you can easily deploy right in your environment and with things like auto-protect, Zero actually lets you protect application components as a whole, and we're able to grow with your IT and business needs because of our flexible architecture, right? One other very neat and really notable thing here is Zero really gives the developers the power. Developers, developers can actually create internal processes using our open API to integrate with us and do things like automate deploying a VPG, um, and, and, and really just we, we provide that level of um, openness to our developers to be able to create a more seamless environment um, when, when they're recovering. Now, one of the ways in which Zerto's orchestration automation really comes alive is with failover testing. So let's take a look at uh, a, specific, a couple specific examples here of actually some healthcare customers. So, our customers are actually able to dramatically reduce the time it takes to do testing, as well as to reduce the complexity involved, which allows them to test really whenever they'd like, even during business hours, right? One example here with Care First, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, uh, they actually, before Zerto, had, they were using um, six testing resources. After Zerto, they were actually able to reduce that to just one. Another example, HCA Healthcare, uh, they're an owner and operator of, of healthcare um, facilities and um, providers. They, before Zerto, they had 23 testing resources. And after they implemented Zerto, they were able to reduce that to just six. So as you can see, Zerto really provides that um, simple, easy, failover testing, um, and, and our customers actually are able to perform um, 18,000 tests per month with an average RTO of three minutes and 19 seconds. I mean, you'd be hard-pressed to find those numbers elsewhere. Now, if we look at the hybrid cloud landscape of Circle, right, we, of course, have the private cloud, the virtualization side, which is still very popular, replicating, you know, from site A to site B and from site B to site A. Um, that's, you know, of course, something that, that we do very well. But we also see people using the public cloud and various other cloud providers for their disaster recovery, uh, ransomware recovery requirements. So we can replicate out to not only the public cloud, but also to manage service providers that offer disaster recovery as a service in their own cloud environment as well. And we can also replicate to more than one place at the same time. Um, so you can have a local copy going between two data centers and a secondary copy going out to a public cloud. And you can even have a third copy going out to a disaster recovery as a service site that a managed service provider offers. So this really provides you with that ultimate protection and flexibility um, if you were to be hit with a ransomware attack, for example. Um, and of course, we do have disaster recovery within cloud. So just because you're running apps inside the cloud doesn't mean that we don't have threats like ransomware attacks and outages. So we still have to make sure that we're prepared. Now, the easy um, and fast deployments um, that customers have been used, gotten used to with Zerto 
um, is is really is really all about accelerating um, time to value and eliminating any barriers to getting your applications protected. So we one customer example here, we have one biotech customer who was up and replicating 1,500 servers in three weeks. They're, they're able to leverage um, our advantage with being software only uh, and the way um, we can do, we can recover rapidly um, and automatically scale out to really start getting those extremely low RPOs. So in their case, it's single digit RPOs across a multi-cloud deployment. So that's just one example here of, of you know, what we can deliver when it, when it comes to deployment. Now, part of the reason customers can get up and running so quickly um, and get up and, you know, get that deployment done so quickly is, is our flexible architecture really enables a wide range of configurations and deployments. Um, and on top of that, there's really only a couple of zero components that are needed to deploy. Um, and all of them are very lightweight. So in this example, we're showing a setup with both local replication and remote replication to a DR site, uh, plus additional off-site immutable copies that hosted on-premise or in the cloud. So when you're deploying Zerto, you have uh, Zerto Virtual Manager or ZVM, which is like your GUI. So if you're a data center admin um, you, and you're, you have, you're in vCenter, you have production environment and a DR environment. You have VMs on each host and you use VRA to replicate between the two sites. Our, the nice thing is here, the journal is compressed. And again, as I've mentioned, it keeps track of the changes happening in the VMs for that always on replication that, that we've been talking about. And of course, you can even push off to the cloud uh, an immutable copy using any compatible S3 repository as well. And finally, uh, the replication and journaling I've gone through here is all easily reported on in a variety of ways. We give you complete multi-site visibility through Zerto Analytics. Uh, it's our SaaS solution that's included with your Zerto subscription at no additional cost. Um, so with Zerto Analytics, you can view the protection and recovery status of all your apps, including tracking both protected and unprotected servers. Um, so you can really just get all these different types of intelligent insights uh, into what a Zerto deployment might look like um, when replicating to vSphere or up to the cloud. Um, with, again, with just a Zerto license, you have access to uh, this platform as well. Now, all of the um, things I've just mentioned, you know, it, it's how it sounds great in theory, right? It's kind of how Zerto works on the back end, but let's, let's look at some real life scenarios of real healthcare customers and other customers are utilizing Zerto. So HCA Healthcare, owner, they're an owner and operator of healthcare facilities across the country. They actually were able to reduce their DR solutions from four, that's right, they have four DR solutions to just one, Zerto, which ended up saving them $10 million um, in, the, in expected environment costs to scale uh, their previous four solutions. And what's more, they were able to reduce their RTO from four days to just two hours for all of their tier one applications. So that, that's huge right there. I cannot stress that enough. Reducing the recovery time from four days to just two hours. And of course, I mentioned this on a previous slide, their testing resources were reduced from 23 to just six. Now, let's look into Zerto, how Zerto handles a ransomware attack. So while this isn't a healthcare company. This is still very relevant, and this is how it would still look like for, if this was in healthcare. So we have a customer called Tenkata. They manufacture protective fabric for firefighters, military personnel, and other demanding occupations, right? Before Zerto, they were using antiquated backup tapes and disks as their recovery solution. Uh, they got hit with a ransomware attack, and they faced the 12 hours of data loss and two weeks of recovery time. Their services are far too critical to be down that long, and the impact on the revenue was was huge. They were actually they actually implemented Zerto, and they got hit with another ransomware attack. But this time, their data loss was only 10 seconds, and their time to recover was less than 10 minutes. So they went from 12 hours of data loss to 10 seconds, and two weeks of recovery time to less than 10 minutes. So those are huge numbers. 
So in summation here, before I, before I leave you, I just wanted to go through our three quick differentiators again. We can resume operation at scale within minutes, as you saw with uh, Tunkata and others. We can also recover to a state seconds before an attack. So if you're hit with a ransomware attack, uh, right, right now it's 124 Eastern, you get hit with a ransomware attack, you can actually roll back to 123 in 55 seconds and mitigate that attack. And third, of course, you can de-risk that recovery with the instant non-disruptive testing that you can do anytime uh, with no impact to your production. Now, we really um, are, we, we invite you to experience what Zerto has to offer with all these different resources at, at your disposal. Um, we have a live demo that can be tailored to your specific needs, hands-on labs that are uh, great that, that Anthony and others on his team um, really work hard to create and allow you to test drive Zerto from the comfort of your office or home, um, as well as our healthcare-specific webpage uh, to learn more about Zerto for Healthcare, um, and of course, also a Zerto for Ransomware uh, webpage to learn more about how Zerto combats ransomware uh, to deliver that uninterrupted experience. And lastly, before I leave you today, we'd love to have you join us for the launch of our newest and most innovative version of Zerto yet, Zerto 10. So building in our already best-in-class data protection, Zerto 10 will actually deliver things like real-time ransomware detection to pinpoint and mitigate the earliest stages of a ransomware attack. So we'll also have a couple other um, solutions and enhancements to Zerto that we'll be debuting, and we'll even have a guest speaker. Um, his name is Kevin Mitnick. If you haven't heard about him, he's a renowned convicted computer hacker who actually he's known for hacking into over 40 major corporations um, back in the 90s, and he was apprehended and did some time in prison, and he became he began a career as an expert white hat penetration tester, and now is a guest uh, is a renowned security speaker uh, and the head of his own security consulting firm, as well as a best-selling author. So we invite you to scan the QR code um, with your phone right now to register for the event. Again, this is tomorrow. We'd love to have you. Uh, thank you again, everyone, for your time, and I, we hope that you found this um, presentation insightful. Oh, thank you so much. I know that we did. Uh, I'll speak on behalf of the audience. Uh, just a great conversation. Um, man, I find Kevin so fascinating. I, I have to register for that event myself, actually. That one uh, sounds pretty interesting. Uh, I do want to jump into some Q&A with you, but before we do, um, I'm just going to actually, I'm giving you all one last second to scan that QR code before I move to the yep. poll. So last, last chance, last chance. Go, 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 and gone. I can put it up after we wrap too. So if you missed it, I'll put it back up again. But first, we've got the poll up for all of you. And what we're wondering is what additional information you would like to get about the Zerto solution. So we were just kind of jumping in with Mike. We're going to chat a little bit more with Mike and Anthony now. Uh, but there's obviously lots more to learn. And as we said earlier, you know, healthcare is so specific, and there's so many niche things that you need to consider. And it's really important to make sure that you're getting the information that's going to match your organization and your needs. So this is a step one. You can click on that poll there and let Zerto know how they can follow up with you, what specifically is going to be helpful to get you started on this research journey. While you're doing that, we're going to get into some questions. Mike, Anthony, you guys ready? I think so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, we're, we're good. Uh, we're going to start with this one here. Uh, when VMs get restored, are they all different points in time? Uh, no, they are actually um, the same point in time. So with our um, app-centric approach, we're actually restoring these all as one cohesive unit or entity. So we were able to avoid, you know, those staggered uh, backup windows and things like that. So they're all recovered at the same point. Okay. Uh, is Zerto hypervisor agnostic? Um, yes, yeah, so we are we work at the hypervisor level, so we are software only, which um, those two things, those allow us to be hardware and storage agnostic. Yes. Mm, awesome. So we did get a question about if you need hardware to run Zerto. Nope, uh, it is software only. <laughs> 
I feel like sometimes we have to, you know, it's, it takes a second for us to get through that. It's software only. Okay, so we, we need hardware, right? Nope, nope, software only. <laughs> We're all still adjusting. Uh, what types of, of replication does Zerto use? Uh, near synchronous. So, again, okay. as I mentioned earlier, yeah, it's kind of the best of both worlds with, um, you know, less costly than synchronous and no production impact. Um, like asynchronous with snapshots, for example. Okay. Uh, question, any hit list upgrades? Any, say, say that one more time. Hit list upgrades. I haven't heard it described that way. I'm thinking it means like uh, without any, any uh, loss of, of performance. But, but uh, Brandon, or maybe touchless. Maybe, maybe Brandon means touchless. Feel free to clarify, Brandon. Do you want, well, pick one of those, whichever one you want to answer, touchless or, or lack of performance. How do you handle upgrades? Let's go with that. Um, I'll, I'll let actually Anthony take that from a little bit. Yeah, more. no problem. Yeah. Uh, yeah, from a Zerto standpoint, right, it's pretty seamless through the GUI. You're able to upgrade your Zerto licensing, uh, your Zerto platform to the next version, uh, basically all through our uh, GUI. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what hit list means, but uh, yeah. it's uh, non disruptive. It's non disruptive to your environment in your DR uh, software. There's always new terms, right? Everyone's got new ways of right. describing things, and <laughs> <laughs> we we all get to learn something new every time. Acronyms are always a really fun one. Every company has different ones. Um, okay, so yeah, a, a little bit of that. Um, all right, so basically, it's easy to get the upgrades that you need as you're going through. Um, and on the note, we did have some questions about the support. Um, now, Mike, you just at the end of your presentation were mentioning that there's healthcare-specific resources available on your website. Um, anything else that you want to say about the sort of supports and training? Uh, that, that Zerto is going to offer both in advance and then anything that they should expect in the moment of, a, of an attack? Um, anything they should expect in the moment of an attack. In, so, in terms of support from Zerto. Oh, um, you know what? Anthony's probably even better than, than no. me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. You're good. No, I mean, unless there's something wrong with the Zerto software itself, right, our support will be hands-off. We're not necessarily like... Um, uh, like a like an MSP that's going to be a DRAS right. that's going to be like, hey, oh my God, you know something's happening with you guys. If you deploy Zerto as a standalone solution, uh, that's really you're the superhero in your case, and you'll be doing <laughs> the you know recovering fail over fail back. Um, but yeah, we also come in. Uh, I think I actually had a question ask about like you know a Zerto DRAS. Not necessarily. We're now part of the HP GreenLake for disaster recovery. Uh, that is a DRAS solution that is basically Zerto on the back end. Um, so there's mm. different ways you can use Zerto. Um, so it's really whatever flavor fits your needs. Um, that. That's cool. Yeah, I like that kind of that adaptability. Um, and and as you say, you know, everything's functioning well. Uh, you you get to be the superhero. That's the key takeaway, I think, from this, guys. Yeah. yeah you gave us some great key dif differentiators, but that's the real one. You get to be a superhero <laughs> with Zerto. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, I think we're going to have to leave it there. Before I let you guys go, though, um, if somebody out there is really excited, wants to jump in with Zerto, obviously, you know what, and um, I'm going to, uh, you know what, I'll leave the poll up a second longer. I'm going to put that QR code up again. So for anyone that missed the QR code to go to Kevin Mitnick's chat, I will, I will get that back up before we wrap. Uh, so that's a great way to learn a little bit more. But, uh, and, the, and visiting the site, checking out those healthcare resources, you know, what, what do you recommend as the very first step for somebody that does want to jump in and get started with Zerto? Yeah, so I, I would say it, it kind of depends on what they're looking for. If they want to test mm. drive Zerto, we have those hands-on labs. Um, if you go to the Zerto.com, um, actually, you can go to our healthcare page. You can learn more about healthcare. Um, all of our resources are on there, but there's also um, – a spot there where you can uh, do a hands-on lab as well, or try Zerto for free. Um, alternatively, you can it, you can just email um, info at zerto.com to get started. Um, so those would those would probably be your, you know the best best way to start. I think that's a great way to start. Yeah, I like the the test lab is such a great you know anything where you can really get in and, and see how something's going to function for you is is such a great way to get started. Um, Mike, Anthony, I want to thank you both for being here with us today for a great presentation. Mike, Anthony, thanks for joining in on the Q&A here. It is always so much fun to chat with you both. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Take care.
All right. And thanks to all of you out there who have clicked on the poll. I'm also going to remind you to head on over to the Handouts tab. Be sure that you click on the Zerto link and grab that data sheet, uh, Deliver Uninterrupted Healthcare Successfully Meeting Patient Care and Compliance Standards. We talk about this all the time. Compliance, obviously, top of mind. So this is a great way to follow up and make sure that you're getting that information uh, from Zerto. You know, you're going to explore. Uh, it, it actually talks a lot about digital disruption, which is a really cool way to approach this and, and how that can feel, uh, you know, for lack of a better way to say this, disruptive uh, in our lives, or it can be an opportunity. So check out that data sheet and kind of jump into that conversation about digital disruption and flipping that around into a positive. Um, I'm going to very quickly give away a prize, but I'm going to throw that QR code back on up for you so you can all snag that if you didn't get it. Uh, but right now, our very last uh, $300 Amazon gift card is going to go to, now I'll remind you again real quick, oh, see, I pulled a fast one on you. I was about to give it away. Now I'm going to remind you that you do need to be here live and present at the EcoCast. And now I will give that away. Okay, Jeffrey Wiggins of Texas. Jeffrey Wiggins of Texas, you have won a $300 Amazon gift card. Congratulations. Now I will read out the entire winner's list while I do that. I'm I'm going to go ahead and throw that QR code back on up for you. There you are. All right, all three of our winners today getting $300 Amazon gift cards. That's James Brady of Minnesota, Nathan Bollinger of Missouri, and Jeffrey Wiggins of Texas. And you are uh, all going to hear from us after we wrap up, plus all of you who asked uh, amazing questions, and we got some great questions coming in today. Uh, you will get uh, entered in to win that best question gift card, and we will follow up with you again after we wrap. All right, well, that is it for our EcoCast today. Now, if you're out there thinking to yourself that this seemed like a great time, you might want to present, you might want to get involved, you might want to bring something to an EcoCast, a MegaCast, a Summit. We would absolutely love to have that conversation with you. Scott, Keith, and I would all love to chat with you. So please do shoot us an, an email at connectedactualtechmedia.com, and uh, we will get that discussion rolling and hopefully see you on a, on a multi-event or on a, a MegaCast, EcoCast Summit soon. Speaking of which, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about this uh, upcoming megacast, but before I do, since we're kind of here at the end already, that happened so fast today, uh, I really want to once again thank all of our speakers from Gigamon, Rubrik, and Zerto for making this ecocast possible. Uh, it really was a fun conversation today and, and interesting to kind of dive into some of these nuances around healthcare. On that note, a very special thank you to all of you for attending, for asking some great questions. It's a really fun time. I mean, ransomware is not fun, I know. But thinking about the front end of it, thinking about ransomware and security preparedness, that's what does make it a little bit fun maybe because we get to feel like we're prepared. We get to feel like we're, you know, as, as Mike and Anthony just said, we're setting ourselves up to be superheroes. So that is an exciting takeaway from this. Uh, and, and I know it can be a little scary, but there's some opportunity there to set, to set ourselves up, to get that good night's sleep. So uh, thank you so much for coming and joining in that conversation today. I hope that you've all gotten some really interesting ideas, maybe some tips, maybe feeling a little bit better informed or well-equipped to tackle uh, some of these things that you might be needing to implement at your organization. Now, before you take off today, I just mentioned this, but I do want to make sure that you join us again for a megacast tomorrow uh, on maximizing your data, data management, movement, and optimization. We hear this all the time, data is king, data is king, right? Uh, but if you're not able to optimize it, if you're not able to utilize it to, to do what you need to do with it, then you know what is the point? So come join us Thursday, May 18th. That's tomorrow at noon I was going to say noon p.m. Noon p.m. Eastern. <laughs> <laughs> 9 a.m. Pacific, uh, and we'll have a great conversation with Rubric and Pure Storage. Well, I hope to see you all again there, and uh, either way, until then, I hope that you have an absolutely beautiful end to your day. 